me and my friends, we, we often joke, I, I say this often, you know, uh, our parents made us uh, drug addicts. They drug us to church every Sunday, um, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever you had Bible study, if you had uh, Baptist training union, you had that. And if you were like me, your mom was in the choir, so you had to go to choir rehearsal. You were at church almost every day. And I thank God for it. Even, even those times where I was sleeping in the pews, God was planting the seed. And likewise, I want to encourage you parents and grandparents that you are planting the seed of righteousness in our young people. Amen? Um, with that also being said, I wanted to announce we're having a, uh, a Zoom meeting for our young people. We want to check in periodically. Uh, just to see how it is with your soul. And so next Tuesday, we will be having a Zoom meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. And so please be attend, uh, please attend, because we want to pray with you and for you. We want to support you in all of your gifts. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, this time of honor, and this time of glorification. God, we pray that this word speaks to our heart, Lord. Lord, we need to hear a word from you. So I ask God that you preach to me, through me, and for me. Exclude me out of this equation. Have thine own way, O God. And we will be careful to give you the glory, honor, thanks, and the praise. For someone today is saying, it's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. So God, speak to their heart, to their situation. And God, we will be careful to be obedient to your word. To love you. To live out God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to deviate slightly from our sermon series, um, and instead of preaching from the book of Isaiah, we'll be coming from a contemporary of Isaiah, who also served during the term of Uzziah. Uh, this message is relevant, and you'll see why in a few moments. Um, and I'm just going to be preaching from just one verse, the prophetic book of Amos, Amos chapter 5. Verse 24. This verse has been made popular um, for the last 57 years because of a certain individual. A certain individual who we will be celebrating. <clears throat> we should have been celebrating uh, all of our lives, but at least on Friday and on Monday, we will honor this man. On August 23rd, 1968, as he was preaching, I call it preaching at the Lincoln Memorial, one of his key lines or catchphrases was, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. New Living Translation says, instead, let justice flow and righteousness like a mighty river. Today, I want to preach from the subject, let it flow. Amen. I want to encourage our young people, our middle-aged people, and our seniors, let it flow. Nineteen forty-nine, Ebenezer Baptist Church. A young man who was born on January fifteenth, nineteen twenty-nine, was ordained as a preacher of the gospel. This man would be considered one of the greatest modern prophets in all of history. While some argue he wasn't the greatest hooper, he did not always get straight A's in school. He was a man of God, mighty and deep. He was a man who preached the truth and empowered millions of people and generations to come to stand up for civil rights and for justice. I believe because of this man and those like him, Life was made better. And although his dream was not fully accomplished, this man, as he said, he's been to the mountaintop and he sees a promised land someday. Amen. This man named after his father, actually at birth, was named Michael King Jr. His father, also a great preacher, the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, changed their name because of his fondness in theology of a great German, the Protestant reformer Martin Luther, he changed their names to Martin Luther King Sr. and Martin Luther King Jr. 
he would help this young man grow in the ways of God and send his son to Morehouse and Crozier and Boston University. He would support this young man's theology. I can only imagine there were times as a parent that things may have been frustrated, but he kept the faith. He kept pouring into his child. And I want to encourage you parents. Some of you may have felt like cutting your kids off. Some of you may have felt like all of your work is in vain, but let the love continue to flow. Let the support continue to flow because you may not have any idea how great your child will be. You may not fully know how great the purpose God has for that child. While it was clear at an early age, as he won oratory contest, Martin Luther King Jr., it was clear that he was to be a great preacher. We didn't know about the boycotts he would lead. We didn't know about the laws that would be changed as far as voting rights. We didn't know how much of an impact he would have on people. But he let the spirit flow through him. And he had people in his life, like his wife, his children, his parents, and so many other colleagues like Ralph Abernathy and many others that let the spirit of God flow even though it was controversial. And I want to let you know today just because you do what is right doesn't mean it will be popular. Everybody will not always like what you're doing, especially when it's things of God. But you have to be able to answer to God. You have to be able to stand and do what is right in spite of other people's criticism, negativity, and downright hatred. And I say all this to say to my young people, as you go along the way, your journey of purpose in life, you may face some obstacles. You may face moments in life in which you don't feel support. But know that God is on your side. And as long as you are doing what God has told you to do, as long as you continue to stand up for what is right, you may lose some people along the way, but you'll gain so much more. Amen. I believe I have some witnesses here in the vehicle that know they may have lost some people that they thought were friends along the way. They may have lost some friends along the way. But with God, you gain so much more. How many people know that as long as you've got God on your side, the song says every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is the foundation platform for today's text. I felt it'd be robbery to preach on Martin Luther King Jr. weekend or as they say in coming to America Martin Luther the King mm -hmm. and not address where we are today. Just like Martin Luther King addressed the Emancipation Proclamation and the progress that had been made but there was still work to be done some 57 years later almost 58 there is progress that has been made and there is work to be done. What I find amazing is, rather than more people stepping up, there are more people sitting down. There are people who rather than be agents of change, speaking the truth in love, speaking truth to power, having an authentic prophetic voice, there are people that have become complacent in the state we're in. And I wanna encourage somebody here today that you have a voice, Amen. whether you recognize it or not. You have gifts, you have talent, you have power, and you have possibility. And you should not use it or lose it just to sit idle by. You should not lose the power you have just to fit in. I was reminded of this phenomenon this week as a movie that has already become popular on Amazon entitled One Night in Miami. I won't tell the whole story, because I encourage you to go see it, but four great individuals, Jim Brown, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and Sam Cooke, came together one night in a hotel room and had a conversation, and I won't tell you who, but for me, the greatest theme of all, was there was one particular individual who had already accomplished a lot, but it took a little push from a friend to call him out on who he was and where he was and to remind him of where he came from. And as that friend pushed him, although
that particular individual didn't see the impact he could have. That particular individual didn't live much longer after that. But even though he didn't live longer, the, the impact he made when he transformed and was willing to stand up for what is right had monumental impacts on the world. Likewise, some of you, although you may not see it, you may feel like I'm not a preacher, that's not my calling. You have a voice and you have a chance to make change. Amen. Change starts with me. Amen. Some of you are wondering, well, what does this have to do with the text? This has everything to do with the book of Amos. Because Amos, like many of you, was not a preacher. If you look at Amos chapter 1 and the headings and the topics in a topic Bible or study Bible, Amos, the son of Tekoya, was known to be a herdsman, a vine dresser, and more importantly, a farmer. He did not come through the prophetic line like Isaiah and many other prophets. He did not recognize a call in his life. But God used him to speak the truth in love and to be an agent of change. And Amos had a choice. He had a decision to say, God, that's not me. But rather than fight against God, and I can tell you, you cannot run from purpose. You can try. You can try to fight against the will of God, but it will be a major, ma major hindrance on your life. Come on but a Amos says, Lord, here I am, like, like the prophet Isaiah. He says, Lord, send me. And I'm wondering, do I have any people here today? that have submitted to the will of God in your life, that say, Lord, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. God, I'm going to go wherever you tell me to go. God, I just want to be used by God for your glory. Not, not for my fame, not for my fortune, but God, I want to be used by you. And Amos doesn't preach and name it and claim it gospel. A Amos doesn't make it pretty. He doesn't preach all bells and whistles, but he tells the truth. Let me help you out, young people. Just because somebody tells you the truth, even if it hurts, they're doing it in love. You better be careful of people that will lie to you just to make you feel good. You, you better be careful of people who, who, who will try to sugarcoat stuff just to make you feel good. I'd rather somebody tell me the truth and shame the devil than to lie to me and try to make you feel good. a lie always comes out in the end, and a lie will hurt you and your friends. So if you got somebody that will tell you the hard truth, you ought to appreciate that person in your life. And you need to be the kind of person that will tell the truth. Don't go around telling lies, telling lies on people, or telling lies about how good things are or how bad things are. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So Amos tells the truth. He tells them around the time of 743 B.C. that, hey, Y'all have been messing up. Y'all have been doing wrong. Israel, you were God's chosen people. God showed you special love when he delivered you. God has blessed you beyond measure, unlike other nations like Tyre and Sidon and Damascus. God has shown you special love. And I'm looking at some people that God has shown you some special love. God has delivered you from some stuff. God has, you God, God has shown you favor. And don't get convenient amnesia. Don't forget what the Lord has brought you from. Don't forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't forget what the Lord has promised you. Don't you dare forget about God and all of your accomplishments. Don't you dare forget about God. I know it. But the people of God had forgotten about God. They got to a point where they were idol worshiping and having bad friendships and relationships. You gotta be careful about these frenemies. One of the frenemies that is often repeated and we'll deal with it more in Isaiah is Assyria. Assyria lined up with Israel and Judah. They tried to connect, especially with Judah, but all the while they wanted to take their place. The old saints used to sing a song, not in church, but they used to sing a song, they smiling in your face. But all the while they wanted to take their place. By the time we get to chapter 5, the Lord speaks through Amos. He says in verses 23, Take away from me the noise of your songs. 
I won't even listen to your music. It had gotten so bad that God didn't even appreciate or value their worship. Their worship was in vain because their living was not right. Here's the problem. Don't, don't act like you're so saved and don't love people. Don't, don't, don't act like you're so good to God and so good by God and for God, but you turn your nose up at other people. Don't, don't get so sedity and beside yourself that you ignore those who are in poverty, those who are hurting, and those who are in need. Don't get too cute that you think you're better than other people. All you need to know is that God has blessed you. And if God has blessed you, be a blessing to somebody else. They had gotten to a point that God said, I don't even honor your rituals and festivals because your heart ain't right. I don't even pay attention to your praise because your heart and your living ain't right. And I want to convict somebody here today because God doesn't care how much you shout. God doesn't care how well your runs are when you sing. God doesn't care how well you think you can preach, how great you think you are as a teacher. If your living is not right and you're intentional about not living right, God is not honoring your worship. Those who are watching on Facebook, you don't have to like it. I'm telling the truth. This, this is what the word of God says. But, but Amos gives a caveat. He says, God is at a place where he's not even paying attention to your praise and your worship. But, I love that word, but. Mm. It is an adverse conjunction that shows contrast means it negates everything that happened before. If things could be going down, trouble in your way, but God. Things could be terrible, you could be sick. You could be low on money, stressed out, have anxiety, depression, not sleeping at night. But things could be terrible. You could be facing death. But God. Always oh, had some but God things that know and can testify. You had some moments in your life that God turned some things around. And you're here today by the grace of God and you can say but God. Things were down and out. You could have lost your life. You could have lost your mind. But God. You didn't know how to turn. You didn't have family or friends you could turn to, but God. Anybody here has some but God moments where God turns things around in your life and you can praise God today that you never would have made it if it wasn't for God. You wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God. And you thank God for God turning things around. Every time you turn around, God is turning things around. And you thank God because you didn't have the power, you didn't have the strength, but God did. And God said not yet to whatever you were going through. God said not yet to that situation. God said not yet to you losing your life, losing your health, losing your family. God said not yet. But in this case, he says, but instead of doing what you're doing, taking advantage of people, not loving on people, being a fake friend, being disingenuous, let justice flow. You may be asking, what does justice look like? Because when it comes to justice, it, it seems like it's not for us in America. What, what does justice look like? It, it means equality, it, equal opportunity in our schools, equal pay in our jobs, equal opportunities when it comes to buying homes and loving one another all the same. And, and here is one of the hard things about that. Everybody will not treat you right. Everybody will not reciprocate the love that you extend. But when you show justice and you treat everybody the same, even if they don't reciprocate it, you have done your part. So justice looks like little black boys and brown boys and black girls and brown girls getting the same opportunities as white boys and white girls. Justice looks like laws being put in place not to place us in prison for 50 years when, when some of other races and cultures get the same penalty for five years. Justice, justice looks like health care being provided in our communities the same way it's provided in other communities where we don't take it.
advantage of other people, but we love one another. And rather than trying to climb it up the hill and take advantage of people, we help one another. I want to know New Hope Baptist Church. Are we going to help one another? Are we going to be there for one another? Are we going to support one another and love one another? But we've got to let justice flow. We, we have to be the agents of change. Now, I, I like the fact that Amos was willing to step up and speak, even though he was not designated a prophet. But God used him in spite of his background. And, and, and he believed in letting justice flow. But I, I don't want us to skip over Amos' personality, because it shows us that God can use anybody and everybody. And I want to let these young people know God can use you too. God can use anybody. In fact, some of, you, some of your favorite preachers used to be drug dealers. Some of your fa favorite praise and worshipers used to be out on street corners. So, some of your favorite, most anointed people had not the But how many know that God can use anybody? God can use anybody. Somebody ought to say, even me, Lord. You can say however you want to use me. Lord, I want to live so God can use me anyway and anyhow. Anybody here got a testimony that God used you in spite of you, and we can thank God today, not because you're so great, but because the God we serve is great and is mighty and works in these words. And so God used this farmer who didn't have on a custom suit, probably smelled like the herd he was with. Probably had raggedy clothes on, but, but God used him anyhow. And God used him to go into hostile territory because at this time the Israelites didn't like Judah. And he told them, despite all he faced, despite people not being his friend anymore, he didn't get a bunch of likes and follows and hearts and thumbs up. But God used him anyhow to say, let justice flow. But not only let justice flow, let righteousness flow. Holiness is still right. Right living is still right. Living for God is still right. And if you put your heart and your mind to God and say, God, I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do. I'm not going to go the way of the world. But God, I want to do what's right. Righteousness is seeking the will of God in your life. You may not always hit the mark. You may not always be perfect, but if you are righteous before God, you'll be called a friend of God. And again, as I said earlier in the sermon, as long as you've got God, don't worry about your friends, your enemies, your haters, and your egos, and your egos, and your white person, and your Asian person, and your Latin American person. I don't care who they are. As long as you live righteousness for God, everything will be fine.
brothers and sisters, one of the worst things in the world today is to be basic, the average, to be what's considered normal. Go against the grain. Let righteousness flow. Let justice flow. Don't worry about who's going to go against you. If you've got God on your side, and God is for justice and righteousness, he's more than the world against you. We're living in challenging times. In fact, I'm going to say this publicly. As much as you can, stay in the house this week. We don't know what is going to happen. There, there are people that are upset who have not been advocates for justice, but, but are rather privileged. And I encourage you to protect your family. And how you protect your family, and some of y'all will read between the lines on this, how you protect your family, that's between you and the Lord. I ain't going to get in the middle of that. Stay safe. And don't respond to unrighteousness with unrighteousness. You do what the Lord has told you to do and called you to do. Amos spoke a message of love and hope to people who didn't like him. Amos sacrificed everything, left his comfort zone, grew up in Tekoya, five miles south of Bethlehem, went past Judah to Israel to preach a message to people who didn't like him, who wouldn't receive him. But he did it to impact somebody. And I don't know how many people he impacted, but sometimes in life, if you just reach one person, if what you say just changes one person's life, you've done more than enough. Young people, I believe God is going to use you to help somebody else. You may have a friend who has a voice. You may have a voice yourself to speak to the nations. But God may also use you to speak to somebody else to impact the nation. So don't be afraid to tell the truth. Don't be afraid to let honesty flow, justice flow, love flow, compassion and kindness flow. That's what God wants. That's what your parents want. That's your godparents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. That's what we as New Hope Baptist Church want. We love you. We believe in you. And if you ever have a moment like Elijah where he felt like he was alone because so many people were against him, let us know. You don't have to face this life alone. We're with you. We're here for you. Not just in prayer, but I mean literal support. And so we want you to let it flow. And this message wasn't just for young people. Because there are some people here today, whether watching or in the parking lot. Time is over for us just sitting by. We need to stand up for what's right. Amen. Never would have made it. Thank you.